Good evening. Welcome back to Heritage Baptist Church. The song I'm about to sing, I figured it ties in with the message Paul had this morning, and uh, he will conclude tonight. So, song, when I looked up and he looked down. I was wandering far from Jesus in the paths of sin and shame. When I looked up and he looked down, I had never sought salvation, never trusted in his name. When I looked up and he looked down, when I looked up and he looked down, and what do you know, I really am heaven bound. Yes, I looked up and he looked down. And some of these days I know I'll wear a crown. I had reached a sorry station in this wilderness below. When I looked up and he looked down. I had wasted all my substance and my hope was sinking low. When I looked up and he looked down. Yes, I looked up and he looked down. And what do you know, I really am heaven bound. Yes, I looked up and he looked down. And some of these days I know I'll wear a crown. All my burdens have been lighter ever since I changed my way. When I looked up and he looked down. I came walking in his favor and I praise him for the day. When I looked up and he looked down, yes, I looked up and he looked down. And what do you know, I really am heaven bound. Yes, I looked up and he looked down. And some of these days I know I'll wear a crown. And some of these days I know I'll wear a crown. Okay, well, there's a couple things that we need to uh, keep in prayer, and that is uh, Pastor Fred Black. As I mentioned this morning, he was in uh, pretty bad shape last night, but for as, this, as of this morning, he was doing a lot better. He was eating some. I hope he continues to improve. And then, of course, our own Pastor Rodney Noblet and Aaron, they've been under the weather, and Hopefully they continue to improve as well. So, like I said, Paul, this morning, had a great message, and uh, he will conclude that tonight. And so I'm proud to reintroduce to you Paul Crawford. great to be back tonight. Um, we're going to begin where we left off this morning. Turn to, uh, in your Bibles, Revelation chapter 6. So we left off this morning with the first seal, which was the Antichrist riding the white horse. So in verse 3, it says, When he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. The power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So we see in the second seal, the second seal is the red horse. The red horse represents war which means war will break out. And because of this war, peace will be taken from the earth and many people will be killed. In verse five, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard a third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he sat on him, had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see that thou not hurt the oil and the wine. 
So we see riding the third horse is the pale horse. And the pale horse represents famine. We see that the ballast was brought out and it was weighed in a measure of wheat and a measure and three measures of barley was for a penny. And this actually represented a day's wage, which means that during the tribulation time, there will be famine where it will take everything you make in one day just to buy food, which means there will be no money for your mortgage. There will be no money for your car payment. There will be no money for utilities. There will be no money for anything extra. Every single penny you make will go just to buy food. And if you see the food prices lately, they're starting to skyrocket. If anybody's been watching the news, um, China has been going through major floods. Um, and it's interesting because China is normally one of the world's largest producers of food. They actually put food on the world market. But this year, it's going to be different. This year, China is going to be buying food. And we know that China makes up almost a third of the Earth's population. Two billion people in China, which means that they are now going to have to compete for the food supply that's on the Earth. So we see that this pale horse is beginning to take place in 2020. Then we come to verse 7. And when we heard, or when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked up in a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and the power was given unto him over a fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. So we see that this seal is the pale horse, which represents death. So we start out with war, which kills people. Then we have a famine, which kills more people. And we see that a fourth of the population will die because of this fourth seal. Um, as we go through Revelation, you will see that in the first three and a half years, one half the world's population will be destroyed. One half of every single person that you know will be dead in three and a half years during the seven years tribulation. We come to verse nine. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? The white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little while, for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they should be fulfilled. So here we see in the fifth seal that believers will be martyred during the tribulation period. So we talked about this morning about the rapture. So at the beginning of the seven years tribulation, every single person who is left on the earth will be unsaved. But here we see that many have become saved, but as a result of their faith in Christ, they paid with their life. The tribulation will be very tough to be a Christian and survive. And the majority of the believers who put their faith and trust in Christ during the tribulation period will be martyred just like this. And um, verse 12, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became blood and the stars of heaven 
go up on the earth. Even as the fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken, and the and heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountain and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth, on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Notice here that these unbelievers know that this judgment is coming directly from God. But we will see as we continue to read that even though they know the judgment is from God, they still refuse to repent. Then we come to chapter 7. Chapter 7, we see the 144,000 sealed. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor of the sea, nor of any trees. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. If you continue to read that 12,000 from each tribe, each of the 12 tribes are sealed for God's service. This is 144,000 Jews will be sealed at the beginning of the tribulation and their main purpose will be missionaries throughout the world. So you think about it that God has already scattered the Jews throughout the world. And there was a reason for that. And that reason is now when the tribulation period begins, these people are already in place. They're already in the countries that they are supposed to be in. And when God seals these 144,000 throughout the whole entire world, they will be able to bring his message to the unsaved. And as a result, multitude and millions of people will put their faith in Christ. Then we come to chapter 8. <clears throat> it's interesting when we talk about the seven judgments in each one of these sets. The seventh seal actually represents the seven trumpet judgments. So in verse eight or chapter eight, verse one, it says, when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. It's interesting that all of heaven becomes silent for a half hour. How devastating does this have to be for every single person in heaven to be silent for one half hour? What devastation is getting ready to become upon the earth that there is silence and nobody speaks for a half hour's time? That is what takes place during this seventh seal. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire and the, of the altar and cast it into the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees 
were burn up and all the green grass. So now we come to the beginning of the seven trumpet judgments. This is the second set of seven judgments that God brings upon the earth. If we remember back in the Old Testament, when Moses and Aaron brought the judgments upon the Egyptians, God does the same thing once again during the seven years tribulation period. And we see in this first trumpet judgment that hail and fire mingled with blood is cast upon the earth and a third part of trees and grass were burned up. Why is it significant? that the grass and the trees were burned up. What do we get from trees? We get oxygen, right? Think about this. So now you will have one third less oxygen produced on this earth. Anybody who has breathing problems is going to be severely impacted through this judgment. Then in verse eight, and then the second angel sounded and it was as a great mountain burning with fire and was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed so here we have in the second trumpet judgment is this burning mountain we have some type of asteroid or some type of meteor that falls into the ocean and as a result, a third of the ocean life is destroyed, which means there's less food on the planet. And a third of the ships were destroyed, which means there's a third less ship to be able to transport product and food from one place to another. We know in America, where do we get the majority of our products? China, right? <clears throat> so during this time, you're going to have one third less ships bringing those products to America. In verse 10, and the third angel sounded, and there, there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of rivers and upon the fountain of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. So now you see that God has taken away a third of the oxygen in the plant life. He's taken away a third of the animals in the ocean where we get our food. We, he's taken away a third of the ships. And now he's taken away a third of the fresh water which many people will die because they do not have fresh water to drink. So you see that each one of these judgments that God brings upon mankind is getting a little more severe each time. We come to verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, the third part of the moon, the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and a night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet and of the three angels which are yet to sound. In chapter 9, <clears throat> And the fifth angel sounded, and a star, or I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the keys to the bottomless pit. Who is this star that we're talking about? This star is none other than Satan himself. So Satan comes with the keys to the bottomless pit. And in verse two, he opens the bottomless pit. And there arose smoke out of the pit and the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as a scorpion of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God on their foreheads. 
And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should torment them five months. And their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shape of the locusts were like horses prepared unto battle, and on the heads were as crowns like gold, and their faces were faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as it were blessed breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like in the scorpions, and they were stings in their, in their tails, and the power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew is Abaddon, and in the Greek tongue, has his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there comes two more woes thereafter. So what takes place here? Satan gets the keys to the bottomless pit. He lets loose this group of angels, fallen angels, and these fallen angels come up on the earth and they torment men for five months. And through that torment, men want to die, but are unable to die. Where does these angels come from? Well, the Bible tells us. Let's go back to um, 2 Peter. Turn a few books back to the left. 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's go with verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains to be reserved unto judgment, and spare not the old world, but save Moses and the eight persons, the preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Turn over to Jude, a couple books to the right. Jude verse 6, it says, And the angel which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved them in everlasting chains unto darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So God, in the Old Testament, there was a group of angels that left their first estate, and because they left that first estate, they were put into chains, and they have been there for 6,000 years. Now, God gives Satan the keys to this bottomless pit, and they are let loose, and as a result, they torment mankind for five months. So all the people who have received the mark of the beast who have followed the Antichrist for five solid months, they will be tormented nonstop. And they, their torment will be so severe that they will want to die, but can't. So how bad does it have to be for you to want to die, but be, not be able to? In verse 13, let's go back to Revelation chapter 9. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of men. Notice that we've already killed a fourth back in um, a few judgments ago. Now we kill another third. So now we have destroyed one or one half of the world's population. The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses and the visions and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacket and brimstone and the heads of horses were the heads of lions and out of their mouth issued fire, smoke, 
and brimstone. So it's interesting that between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet, we have a little pause. We have um, in chapter 10, which we're not going to go over, but <clears throat> if you get a chance, read it. There's an angel in a little book. And then in chapter 11, we come to the two witnesses. And there was given me a rod, like an, or a reed, like it unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, measure the temple, and the altar, and then that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it was given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be tread underfoot for 42 months. So we are now in the middle of the tribulation period. In verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So we saw that God sealed 144,000 missionaries. And now he brings the two witnesses. These two witnesses will spread God's word for 42 months, for three and a half years. And then they will be killed. And for three days... Go down to verse 11, or let's, yeah, go down to verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered unto them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them, and the same hour there was an earthquake, a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake was were slain of men seven thousand, and the raiment were affrighted, and gave glory to God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh. Then we come to the seventh trumpet, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice in heaven saying, the kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of the Lord and of Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on the throne, on, on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, we give thee thanks, <coughs> O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come in a time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants and the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. <clears throat> and the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in the temple the ark of his testimony, and there were lightnings and voices and thunders and an earthquake and great hail. <coughs> so the, the end of the second set of seven judgments have taken place. <coughs> then we come over... <coughs> To chapter 15. Chapter 15, we come to the final set of seven judgments. <clears throat> and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were the sea of glass mingled with fire. And then that had gotten a victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. And they sing the songs of Moses, the servant of, of God, and the songs of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works. Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy, are thy, are thy ways, thou King of the saints. Then we come to verse 16 or, or chapter 16. 
And I heard a great voice of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your way and pour out the vials or the bowls of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went out and poured his bowl or vial upon the earth. And there were fell a noisome and grievous sores upon men, which had the mark of the beast and upon them, which worshiped his image. So the first bowl judgment we have these um, cancerous sores break out upon all the people who have received the mark of the beast. Verse 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of water, and they became blood. So we see that in the last set of judgments, God destroyed a third of the ocean and a third of the fresh water, the rivers. Now he has destroyed all of them. Now the whole sea, all the rivers have turned to blood. In verse 5, and I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. In verse 8, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blaspheme the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues with pain, <clears throat> and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pain and of their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east, or China, might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, which is Satan, the beast, which is the Antichrist, and the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of God Almighty. So now God is preparing for the battle of Armageddon. We have been hearing about the battle of Armageddon our whole entire life. <clears throat> and now it is coming due at the end of the seven years tribulation period. Turn over to chapter 19. So we remember that before the tribulation began, the church was raptured out, and in heaven we had the judgment seat of Christ. And now we come to chapter 19. <clears throat> we come to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So if anybody knows anything about the Old Testament, in the Old Testament... When they had a Jewish wedding, the normal procedure was that the bride <clears throat> would prepare herself for the groom to come back. And when the groom came back, he would take the bride back to his father's house after he had prepared a place for them to live. They would have the wedding and then they would have a ceremony. The same thing that we have in our weddings today. So you have the wedding, you have the reception, and then you have the honeymoon. So in verse nine, or chapter 19, we see the marriage supper of the Lamb. So the wedding took place at the judgment seat of Christ. The bride of Christ was um, taken into heaven by the groom, now, at the end of the, of the tribulation period, 
in verse 6, it says, And I heard, as it were the voice of a great multitude, and the voice of many waters, and as the voice of many thunderings, say, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And they said unto me, See, thou doest not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, that they have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we talked about this morning that um, kings only rode white horses to war. We see in verse 11 of Revelation chapter 19. So in chapter 6, the Antichrist rides a white horse. He had a bow and no arrow. Now we see another white horse in verse 11. It says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This is none other than Jesus Christ himself. This is the second coming. In verse 12, it says, His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he tread the winepress of the fierceness of wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls, that fly in the midst of the heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. So we see that Jesus Christ comes back during the second coming, and we, his bride, come along with him. So we go into heaven during the rapture. The wedding takes place during the judgment seat of Christ. We have... The married supper of the Lamb, so we have the reception after the wedding, and now we are coming back upon this earth to reign with Christ for a thousand years for the honeymoon between the bride of Christ and the groom. So turn over to chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the keys of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he said, Hold on the drag or lay hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be let loose. A little season. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, in which were not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon his forehead or in, it, in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So we talked about this morning about the judgment seat of Christ. Part of the judgment seat of Christ is how we will reign with Christ for a thousand years. Remember, um, if you remember the parables, 
We talked about the parables of the talents this morning, where one had five talents um, and his doubled, right? So he was given the ability to um, rule over more than the one that had two, right? <clears throat> so during the during the thousand year reign of Christ, we will reign with Christ as his bride. We will help Christ actually manage and govern this earth. So we come to um let's go to let's go to verse five, chapter twenty. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy it is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations, which are the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog together, or gather them together to battle, the number of who is as a sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the, the camp of the saints about, and the, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. So at the end of the second, or at the, um, the end of the seven years tribulation, at the second coming, Christ comes back. He takes the Antichrist and the false prophet, and he casts them into the lake of fire. He takes Satan and binds him for a thousand years. And he reigns on the earth during a millennium for a thousand years. And when that thousand years is over, Satan is let loose. And as a result, Satan had the ability to gather people once again to fight against Jesus Christ and his people. And then Satan is finally defeated forever. He is cast into the lake of fire. And then we come to what's called the great white throne judgment. In verse 11, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. The death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. So we see that this is the final judgment. So the believers were judged during the judgment seat of Christ right after the rapture. Now the unsaved from the beginning of the world, from Cain to the very last person at the end of the 1,000-year millennium who was unsaved. So for 7,000 years, every single unsaved person will stand before what's called the great white throne judgment. And notice what takes place. So he says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God in the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. So we talked this morning about the judgment seat of Christ is like the Olympics. This judgment is like a courtroom. This judgment, 
there will be a judge. There will be a prosecutor. And that prosecutor will open the books and those books contain every single thing that you have ever done in your whole entire life, good and bad. So think about this. Think about every deep, dark secret that you have that nobody knows about. They will this day. Your life will be played like a movie. And every single sin, every single thought that you have ever had in your entire life will be portrayed for all of mankind to see. This is not a judgment that you want to be at. This is not a judgment that you want to stand before. And then God opens another book. What is this book? The book of life. The book of life is the book that has the names of every single believer from the beginning of time. Their names are in this book. So once you stand before God at the great white throne judgment and he shows you your life, every single sin you ever committed, every single bad thought you ever had, then he's going to open up the book of life and he's going to show you that your name's not in it. And when you see that your name is not in the book of life, you will be cast into the lake of fire for eternity. This is a judgment that you do not want to be part of. This is a judgment that you do not want your family, your friends, your neighbor to be part of. That is why it is important to reach as many people as we possibly can for Christ today. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. And the moment you die is too late. The moment you die without Christ, you will stand at the great white throne judgment. You will be judged when those books are open. And your whole life story will be played for everyone. Let's go to verse 20 or chapter 21. Then God creates a new heaven and new earth. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, come down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Notice that it's not until after the great white throne judgment that God shall wipe away tears from everyone's eyes. Then drop down to verse 21. <clears throat> verse 21 is New Jerusalem. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talk with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to the great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her lights were at, or like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And we don't have time, but we're going to, if you continue reading, you will see that this city 
that Jesus Christ went to prepare for his bride has taken him 2,000 years. This city is a cube, which means it is a, as tall as it is wide as it is in depth. So it is 1,500 mile cube. <clears throat> Think about that. And it has 12 layers. It has 12 levels. So it's like a 12-story building, and it's 1,500 miles wide and cubed in 12 stories. How big does this city have to be? So this city, and it's interesting, this city will be suspended between where the new earth will be created and where God's throne, the third heaven, is now. So it will be like a planet suspended in between the two and the bride of Christ, the church, which is us, will spend our eternity in New Jerusalem. Then we come to chapter 22. And in verse 6, he said, And he said unto me, These things... For these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of this prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of this prophecy, of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and adult or idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that heareth say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words and the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in his book. He, is, he which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. In grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all. So as we see, the tribulation is not going to be a very pleasant place to be. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we pray that if there's anyone here tonight, anyone who has not put their faith and trust in you, Father, that they will see through these pages that we read tonight that today is the day to put their faith in Christ. Today is the day to repent of their sins and to make you the God of their life. 
We pray that they will not wait till tomorrow because tomorrow could be too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.